Even all remarks here, back again with another video, back again with another VR video. And it's been a few days since the Oculus Connect event in San Jose where they announced the Oculus Quest. And since the event, one of the main questions I get is, Remarka, should I get the Oculus Go or should I hold out for the Oculus Quest? Well, now it's been a few days, a lot of the information about the Oculus Quest has been confirmed, people have been asking the right questions, and I thought it was a good time to put together a video to kind of compare them. What we know about the Quest, what we know about the Oculus Go, and then you can make an informed decision on whether you want to kind of hold out or or drop your money now on the Oculus Go. Let's go through that now, shall we? First up, the main obvious difference between the Oculus Go and the Oculus Quest is price. The Oculus Go starts at 199 for the 32 gigabyte model and goes up to 249 for the 64 gigabyte model. What we do know about the Oculus Quest is it starts from 399 for the 64 gig model, and it does specifically say, sort of in their literature, from 399 so we can expect like the oculus go to have multiple versions that have bigger capacity so i'm hoping for maybe 499 you can get yourself a 512 gigabyte version so that should be plenty of space for games and apps i do know with my 64 gigabyte version here the oculus go i do struggle sometimes with space i'm probably a little bit different to most people as i pretty much download every single app that's ever been created but i'm always having to delete stuff off if i'm wanting to put media on here i'm having to take it off and back on again and that's a bit inconvenient a bit annoying sometimes i don't mind paying a little bit of a premium to add a lot of storage to the device so that's not being preferred what we do know is that it's going to be a 64 gig model for 399 what we have seen at the oculus connect event is there were different color versions of the oculus quest so they range from sort of orange to blue to black whereas the oculus go only comes in this gray now are they going to release it those colors were they just for the event because they're kind of like experimental models Probably. I imagine that we'll end up with just the black version come release, but it'd be interesting to know. I mean, what sort of colours would you like? Maybe if they bring out coloured versions of the Oculus Quest, maybe we'll start seeing coloured versions of the Oculus Go as well. I think that'd be pretty good. I don't think we'll get the coloured versions. They were available at OC5, but I think we'll end up just getting black, but that's not been confirmed yet. In relation to storage, the Oculus Go will soon will be getting USB storage. So you'll be able to plug your USB, micro USB devices in and be able to access media from them. It won't be for apps, it'll just be for media. And they said something along the lines that, you know, if your Oculus Go's running low on battery, you might not be able to access your drive, but that's kind of convenient, that's good. Now the Oculus Quest comes with a USB-C port, so faster transfers and faster power as well. So the Oculus Go comes with a 2600 milliamp battery, which lasts you between sort of an hour and a half to two and a half hours, depending on what you're doing. And that's pretty spot on with my experience with the Oculus Go. You can use it plugged in at the same time. They don't recommend it, but it's more of a safety thing because you might pull the wire or whatever when you kind of forget it's there. But you know, it, I've never really had any kind of heating up issues except for when I've been doing some heavy stuff but the Oculus Go has been pretty solid. There's been no confirmation yet on how big the Oculus Quest battery is going to be. Hopefully it'll be bigger, because obviously it's going to be running bigger and better games, but at the same time it's running on newer processors which are more energy efficient. So there might be some sort of balance in there between the two. As it's got USB-C, it might come with an optional sort of power pack or something like that that we can plug in, because it's obviously inside the headset there. People do it with the Oculus Go now, they attach power packs, or you might have a power pack on your hip. Maybe you can do that with the Oculus Quest, but there's no news on how big the battery is, so we can't really compare those yet. As for audio on the Oculus Go, you get the head straps, which have kind of got these plastic sort of straps down the side, which you can see there, and then the sound pumps out of those little slits there. So it kind of pumps out straight down to your ears, one either side. And it works really well, sounds really great. The Oculus Quest has the same system as that, but it supposedly has better bass. So that's nice, a little bit of a richer sound coming out of it. The Oculus Go also has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Interestingly enough, the Oculus Quest has two. So it has one either side. They've confirmed it doesn't matter which side you plug your headphones in, it will still output sound. But they're obviously up to something else as well. I guess, you know, at the basic level, if it's got one either side, you can maybe plug in just one earpiece with a very short wire into either side. And then that's kind of like a very sort of compact headset. Or maybe they'll bring out some sort of deluxe addition so you can plug them in, have something a bit more like the Rift with sort of uh, some proper stalks with some bigger speakers on maybe. So it'd be interesting to keep an eye on that. Oculus Go doesn't have Bluetooth headset capability so you can't sync your Bluetooth headsets to it but there's been no confirmation the Oculus Quest can do that either so we'll have to wait to see how that goes. But personally I don't see that as much of an issue because the headset's so close to your ears why do you need a Bluetooth headset to run that you know three inches from your ear to the headset. Whereas in particular with the Oculus Quest, if you can actually run one headset either side to one ear, that's gonna be perfect. Both headsets have microphones on them. You can see there's a little dot there, I think just about making them out. 
Same thing for the Oculus Quest, so they've both got microphones built in, which is handy, but obviously if you do plug in headsets as well, they can use the microphones on those. Let's move on to screens. The Oculus Go has a 2560 by 1440 resolution LCD panel screen. And it's one single screen that you share between both eyes. So each eye gets 1280 by 1440 pixels. What that does mean is you don't get the IPD slider on the bottom, which kind of sets the sort of uh, distance between your eyes. You have to rely on the Fresnel lenses that are in the Oculus Go. Now the lenses in the Oculus Quest are exactly the same. Oculus has said these are some of the best lenses they've ever created, so they're gonna stick with them. The screen that they use inside is an OLED screen. So what that means is it's darker blacks. So OLED panels, when they do black, they actually turn off, so they don't have any light leaking through sort of thing. So you do get much deeper blacks. Also, it's two panels, two 1600 by 1440 panels. So you get one per eye, of that slightly higher resolution than the Oculus Go, and you get the IPD slider, so you can sort of increase the distance between your two eyes. I don't think many people had an issue with the sort of the IPD on the Oculus Go, but some people did. Both panels on the Oculus Go and the Oculus Quest can run up to 72 hertz, at 72 frames per second essentially, so it should be kind of nice, buttery smooth VR. Now in the Oculus Go, we've found that most apps and most games run at 60 FPS, and there's only kind of like a handful that run up to full 72 frames per second, but that's a nice multiplier on the 24 frames per second that you would get from films and that sort of thing. So it works really well, it's nice and smooth. And it's nice to see that the Oculus Quest is continuing that. Something like the Oculus Rift goes up to 90 hertz, but given that the Oculus Quest is still a mobile processor that's built in, it's nice that it can still get up to at least 72. Talking about processor, the Oculus Go has a Snapdragon 821, which is a few years old now. It's a relatively low powered CPU compared to kind of today's standards. It still does remarkably well for what it is. I think because it's kind of like a lockdown built in system, unlike mobile phones, which vary in spec wildly when they use the same processor, the Oculus Go across the board is exactly the same, same setup. People can build specifically for this system, so they get the most out of it. The Oculus Quest uses the newer Snapdragon 835 processor. It's not the latest 845 processor that people thought we might be getting. Obviously that would impact costs, and Oculus seem confident that the 835 will still be able to deliver an amazing performance for what it is. It's a big bump up in the specs compared to the Oculus Go. They've said it will be able to support Rift-like experiences, so kind of expect sort of Rift games to be ported down to the Oculus Quest. One thing the Quest will have to do that the Oculus Go doesn't is six degrees of freedom tracking. So the Oculus Quest has four cameras on it, four wide angle cameras, two at the top, two at the bottom, and they kind of spread out and they kind of track the room, track your area, make sure you don't bump into things and allow you to truly sort of move around room scale, literally all the way around the room. With the Oculus Go, you can't do that. You get three degrees of freedom. So you're more like a static camera looking around rather than actually being able to move around duck and that sort of thing. One thing that Six Degrees of Freedom does give you as well is Six Degrees of Freedom with your controllers as well. The Oculus Go's controller is a Three Degrees of Freedom so you can move it around but it kind of stays static in one place. You can kind of swing it around but it doesn't really move. You can't reach forward with it. The Oculus Quest comes with two controllers and they're Six Degrees of Freedom. So you'll be able to reach with them, put them up, put them down, put them to the side, do whatever you want, and those trackers on that headset, the Oculus Quest, will track those controllers and where they are. The Oculus Quest controllers as well are laid out exactly like Oculus Rift controllers. So it should be easy for any game to be ported down to keep the same control method. Whereas the Oculus Go controller obviously is very simple, has a little touchpad on it, a couple of buttons and a trigger. So that's a big, big improvement. Two controllers is gonna be a game changer. You'll be able to have both hands live in front of you moving around two and two separate things at the same time whereas the oculus go controller is more like a remote control another thing that we don't know about the oculus quest is how heavy it is now there was a video that was put out by tested we'll put a link to that channel down below i'm pretty sure you know about it already where norm from tested tested it and he did say he kind of noticed a notable difference in weight the oculus go is about 468 grams so about half a kilo and you know it sits quite comfortably on my head i find um, and most people don't seem to complain about it. My little kids, my seven-year-old, has no issues with it. So the Oculus Quest being a little bit heavier will have to be a kind of factor into it. To almost counter that, the Oculus Go and the Oculus Quest have very different straps. So the Oculus Go has this kind of fabric, Velcro strap. So three points, attached onto the side of the headset with this kind of like, sort of little spacer at the back. So it kind of cups your head a little bit. The Oculus Quest comes with a head strap that's more akin to the Oculus Rift's head strap. So more rigid, harder plastic, kind of cups, kind of similar shape to this, but obviously a lot harder. So when it goes on your head, it's gonna hold it there much, much better. Because with that six degrees of freedom you dying around everywhere, it's gonna need to stay nice and snug to your head. 
because you don't want it flying off mid swing. So that's great from the Oculus Quest point of view. It's going to be a much sort of robust headset for being able to use more actively. However, what that does mean is it's less portable. That harder head strap will mean that the whole overall footprint of the headset will be larger. Whereas with the Oculus Go, you could in theory just squash the little head strap there and then you've just got this one little package you could stick in your bag. What I do, I have one of these kind of like lens protectors, which I keep on there. And there we go, I've got a little package. So I, whenever I'm traveling with it, I literally take it like that. Because I find this thing is very robust, very strong. And I've never had any issues with it sort of thing. So that's all in one package. The Oculus Quest, whether the head strap maybe comes off, can fold around, collapse. I don't think it can, but we'll have to wait to see to confirm. So the Oculus Quest will be taking up about this much space in your bag wherever you take it. So that's something to bear in mind that it won't be as portable. Also, you have two controllers. Can you attach them like one controller you can like on the Oculus Go here with this little thing that I've got, had 3D printed? Mm, I wouldn't have thought so. Where are you going to have them? You're going to have to carry those around with you as well. And finally, and probably most important, the apps and experiences and stuff that you'll get on it. They confirmed OC5 that the Oculus Go is aimed at 80% media, 20% games. And to be fair, that is reflected in the sort of stuff that's been coming out on the Oculus Go. It's the perfect device for media, for just relaxing, chilling, pick it up whenever you need it, no sort of moving around rooms or doing anything so it's too strenuous, it's perfect. Whereas the Oculus Quest has been touted the other way around, so 80% games, 20% media. Now they have said they kind of expect that maybe people will use it for media just as much as they do the Oculus Go, but they're focusing on 80% games. They're gonna be pushing much more gaming content to the Oculus Quest than they have on the Oculus Go. Mainly because it's created that way. It's got bigger processors, can handle better games, and it's got that full six degrees of freedom with the two controllers, so it's gonna be game focused. So it'd be likely if you want games, you get the Oculus Quest. If you want just media, then maybe stump up half the price and get the Oculus Go. At launch, the Oculus Go had over a thousand apps and experiences available to it. The main reason for that is because it shared the same marketplace as the Gear VR. So the Gear VR had already been out for years, the Oculus Go pretty much picked up and pretty much took all those apps, most of them, and put them straight onto the Oculus Go. So it ended up with more than a thousand apps and games from day one. And it's probably had between five and eight different things been added every single week since it's been released. The Oculus Quest will have 50 plus titles available on launch. It shares a different marketplace to the Oculus Go, a different marketplace to the Oculus Rift. So it's gonna have its self-contained store where you can only get the content that's made for that. Now they have said people can port their stuff from Oculus Rift to Oculus Go and vice versa and all that sort of stuff. But obviously people have got to make the effort to do that. But from launch, 50 titles. So kind of match that up. A lot of the titles that are on the Oculus Go are 360 degree videos and non-interactive experiences. So it's not a sort of apples to apples comparison. If you were wanting core games, then obviously the Oculus Quest is gonna have those and it's gonna have 50 of them. Whereas the Oculus Go is more, for, as they say, for media, for entertainment, and it's perfect for that. So there's all the information we know about the Oculus Quest and how it kind of compares to how the Oculus Go is set up. Hopefully that will enable you to compare the two and make an educated decision on which one you want to go for. One thing to bear in mind as well is that the Oculus Go is obviously available now. It's been out for a while, it's had some updates, there's some more updates coming. It's kind of a proven concept and it works. The Oculus Quest isn't out until spring 2019 and that means it could be as late as May next year. So that's practically six months from today. Can you wait that long? I think for me, if I knew that the Oculus Go was out now and the Oculus Quest was coming in six months and that this is 199, would I get this now? I think I would. And I would wholeheartedly recommend getting the Oculus Go now. Worst case scenario, you're gonna get six months use out of your Oculus Go before the Oculus Quest comes out. And then you could probably at least trade this in for hundred pound against an Oculus Quest. So for a hundred quid, you get six months worth of use out of this, which I think is fine. And then you can just upgrade yourself to the Oculus Quest and get all those added features and I guess kind of, you know, the more improved Quest package. I think for me, I won't be trading in my Oculus Go because I think portability wise and just media and just be able to pop this in my bag and take it and show people and demo VR. It's a very powerful tool to have in my kit. So I'm not gonna get rid of this. I'm definitely gonna keep it myself. And if anything, the Oculus Quest is gonna be even better, almost like an Oculus Go on steroids. Hopefully that video helped, and if it did, please give it a thumbs up. If it didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's fine. I'm big enough and ugly enough to take it if you didn't like it. But do let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like it. I'll try to do better for next time. Let me know what you think about the Oculus Go and how it compares to the Oculus Quest. Which one are you going for? What are you doing? What's your plan? I'd be interested to know. Become one of the Remarkables and hit that subscribe button and also that notification bell so you know when I next upload a video. That's me done. I'm out. Have a virtual high five.